make more sense to pull it towards you and oh, okay. take the screen. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Nathan Mugas and I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship this Sunday morning. Glad to have you here. We're going to be starting shortly, but in the meantime, I want to invite you to jump into the comment section and share a word of greeting with your church friends as we gather for online church this morning. Now, I know that some of you out there have been a little shy in doing this, and so maybe you've needed just a gentle nudge uh, to jump into the comments and share a greeting. Well, consider this your gentle nudge. Let this be the Sunday where you go out on a limb, because that's where the fruit is, and share a greeting with your church fam here at Elk River Lutheran Church. We'd love for everyone to jump on and share a greeting, say hello, let us know who you are, who you're worshiping with this morning, who's there with you, and where are you from? It's so fun to see people joining us from all over the state, all over the country, really. Uh, it's just been such a blessing to be this community gathered together, held together by God's Spirit, even while we're physically dispersed. And so by all means, jump in, say a hello, and just again, I'm so glad that you are here. Welcome. Know that you are loved, and we are so glad that you are here. Karen Akers. I'm Jim Akers. It's our privilege to worship with you today at Elk River Lutheran Church. Hi, my name is Emma Anderson and welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. I hope you enjoy this. I'm Larry and I'm Jean and we're pleased to have you with us at Elk River Lutheran. Hi! We're the Howlands. Justin, Sherry, and Alex. Welcome to church. So nice of you to join us today. I'm Molly. I'm 
I'm Clara. And I'm Rachel. Welcome to Russia. Hi, this is Steve and Mary Lindbergh. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. We are so glad to have you. Church. I'm Hannah. I'm Steve. I'm Christy. I'm Henry. And this is Oreo. And we're glad you're here. Howdy. We're the Jacksons. I'm Mary Ann. And I'm Jerry. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. We are so glad you could join us. Hope you all come back real soon. I'm Marlis. I'm Cedric. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. And during this Lenten season, let us walk with Jesus to the cross. Good morning. This is Vicki Grand Russ and Don Grand Russ, but he's he's recording this video. We just want to welcome you to Elk River Lutheran Church during our Lenten services. folks, it's Pastor Nathan. So glad that you're here with us for worship. I want to share a little advice about how to get the most out of online worship. I think you'll have the best experience if you really participate in the service. So that means as Taylor's leading the music, sing along loudly. As we do the prayers, pray along with them. When we get to Holy Communion, have communion elements ready so you can participate and receive communion and in that mystical bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, be united as one with the body of Christ, your church family. We're so excited that you are here and I want to invite you into participating throughout the whole service. You can do that in the comments as well. As we are having conversation or discussion, jump in and share your thoughts. We want to hear from you. And if there's something you like, if there's a song that you love, don't be shy to share that with the group. The more we interact, the more it feels like community. And I love that. So glad that you are here. If you're hearing me loud and clear this morning, go ahead and give us a like and a thumbs up. Hello, this is Linda Nielsen. I'm office manager here at Oak River Lutheran Church, and I am so glad that you're able to join us today for worship. Have a blessed day. and Mary Hansen. Welcome to worship at Elk River Lutheran Church. Glad you're joining us this morning. Hi, I'm Steve Buchholz. And I'm Diana Schoensberg. Thank you for being part of our worship service. And I'm Melissa. And, and we, we are, are the Coons. And we're so thankful that you're here with us today. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. This, I'm Delphine. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. I'm Donna Matheson, and this is my husband, Doug Matheson. Welcome to the church. Hi, Julie Haugen from Elk River Lutheran Church. So glad to have you joining us today. Thank you.
Overbees, Ross, Barb, Brindley. Good, Good morning. morning. Hello, everyone. This is Daisy, my other little dog, and we would like to welcome you to Yellow River Lutheran Church. Hello! Happy Palm Sunday! Welcome to worship, everybody. We're glad you're here with us on this Palm Sunday. I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran. I'm Lisa Sampson, Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry. Jeremy Halkus, Intern Pastor. And I'm Taylor Quinn, the Director of Music Ministry and Worship. Yes, and it is Palm <laughs> Sunday, so hopefully you have palm branches or uh, leaves or dried up grass from outside, sticks, <laughs> and, and, you know, paper, you know, anything you can find paper. to, to oh wave God. as we celebrate <laughs> Palm Sunday here together this morning. Uh, we're welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, announcements. Yeah, well, if you're joining us this morning, we'd love to have you check in. Uh, we see a number of people saying hi, welcome, good morning. Uh, keep that up. Let us know where you're at. Uh, reclining from if you're hanging out on the couch this morning uh, say hi welcome everybody in the comments and and uh, reach out to one another um, if you are interested in joining with us in worship this morning and need a bulletin you can go to elkriverlutheran.org and you will find that information there we also have um, in the facebook feed kind of information about the event um, we have our welcome new here form so we'd love to hear from you if you are a guest or visitor um, or just want to tell us how you're doing. So sign in on that form and let us know what's on. Every week we do Holy Communion, and so including this week. So grab your wine, grab your bread, and join us later on this service for Holy Communion. Um, also, after to, after this service, we are doing a, a Holy Hoot Nanny and Hosanna Parade. So uh, join us at the church in the parking lot for a little bit of music a little bit of fun introduction, and then we're going to do a parade around town celebrating Palm Sunday. Yeah, Hosanna. and the map for that is uh, on the uh, on the website too, so you can find the map and join us in the parade, or just check out our route and see us along the way. Um, also, a couple things with Holy Week. This is Holy Week, so we have palm branches outside uh, the church, and we have these Holy Week kits. And so within these Holy Week kits are all kinds of neat things to kind of help enhance your worship experience, including if you picked one up already, you know, a bulletin for Palm Sunday. So you can follow along in, with, in a bulletin, <laughs> just like old times. Uh, some of the other fun stuff that's in there uh, is an Easter garden, which uh, we encourage you to pick up in the next few days because if you plant it, uh, you'll have fresh growing green grass by Easter. And so those are a really cool little uh, kit, a little kind of interactive uh, opportunity to, yeah, just uh, experience the joy of Easter, the story told through that little kit. There's also bread for Monday, Thursday. There's some Laffy Taffy for Holy Humor Sunday in a few weeks, all kinds of good stuff. They're right outside the church. Pick them up. Uh, like I said, you know, we have these special services coming up, and those kits can help enhance your experience of those. We'll be online for services on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. And then on Easter morning, we'll gather for church outside with drive in church at 8 15 and 11, and uh, 9 30, our regular time in between services uh, as well. So we'll be online at 9 30. So however you join us on Easter, we just hope that you will join us, and uh, we're so glad that you're here with us this morning. So welcome. Uh, this is Palm Sunday and so we begin uh, by celebrating with our palms and we first hear now uh, our reading, our, the processional gospel. And so let's hear now uh, our scripture reading read by Christy Bass. The reading comes from the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with the first verse. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. 
they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the reading. Well, thank you, Christy. And this is the story that we are uh, hearing and celebrating here on the Palm Sunday. And so uh, we invite you to take your palms now, uh, <laughs> makeshift as they may be, whatever you got, and uh, hold them up and let us pray. Holy God, on this day when we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was greeted with shouts of Hosanna and palms waving, may these palms be waved by us as we welcome and celebrate the presence of Jesus in our lives. May he fill our hearts in this space with the love and grace of God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to continue by inviting you into song to sing together all glory, laud, and honor, and wave those palms as you sing. Uh, here we go. All glory, laud, and honor. Waving palm branches, Hosanna in the highest. Well, I know a few folks have just joined us, and so let us again 
welcome you. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church on this Palm Sunday. And uh, yes, welcome to our special day where we have a kids program coming up as well. We didn't even mention that at the beginning because I kind of cruised through the announcements. Uh, but uh, let's introduce ourselves again. I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran. I'm Lisa Sampson, Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry. Jeremy Hulquist, the intern pastor. And I'm Taylor Quinn, the Director of Music Ministry and Worship. Hosanna! Hosanna <laughs> indeed. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to continue by joining together in our prayer of the day. And so uh, let us pray together. God of glory, help us to see how you shine in the most humble of creatures. Open our ears to the hosannas all around us and help us to join in and sing. Amen. Amen, indeed. And so we do join in the Hosannas, and uh, it is a really fun and special thing we have to share with you here next this morning. It is a program put together by some of our kids and families who put together their own little videos, and Lisa spliced them all together into Date Palm Live. Uh, and so uh, it's a news broadcast telling us about the life of Jesus and uh, this day where he entered into Jerusalem. Anything else you'd want to say about it, Lisa? No, but thank you and thanks for joining us. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah, so here we go. Date Palm Live, sending it to the camera crew. Welcome to our new show, Date Palm Live, and our exclusive inside report. I am Walter Canaanite. Yes, and I'm Beth Sheba Walters. Our exclusive Insider Report today is all about the person everyone has been talking about. For a while now, our news channel has been receiving tips and inquiries about a man called Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, Beth Sheba. And we investigated and sent our team of top reporters out in the field to bring you the real story. We begin with our ace reporter, Navea who is just outside the gates of Jerusalem where crowds have been gathering since early this morning. Nevea, to you. I'm here with Matthew who is telling me that he arrived here too late into the city to, and is still hoping to get a glimpse of the man everybody is talking about, Jesus of Nazareth. So tell our viewers why you're here and what you hope to accomplish by being here. I heard that this guy that everyone has been talking about and I mean everyone has been talking about, is coming down this road and into Jerusalem today. His followers tweeted minutes ago and they have secured transportation and they should be here soon. People are crazy to see this guy. This guy is some kind of celebrity doing all sorts of things. Scribes and Pharisees have complained about healing people and working on Sundays. Thank you, Matthew. From the outside of the gates of Jerusalem, I'm Nevea. Back to you, Bashi Ben Walter. Thank you, Nevea. Our reporters and producers have been digging deep for sources who can shed light on the rumored activities of Jesus. We go now to Emma, who is excellent at exposing the truth and is with the mayor of the village of Gennesaret, where people are claiming fake news over an event that happened there. Thank you, Bashiba Walters. I'm here with Mayor Clara the small burg of Genesaret, where it seems that miracles have been taking place. Mayor, tell our viewers, what did you witness? Our little village here on the banks of Sea of Galilee usually attracts tourists, especially this time of year. But a few weeks ago, this guy showed up with his buddies. They docked their boat and immediately, it seemed the town was flooded. And I mean flooded, with a bunch of sick people. Then more and more people began arriving from around the region. Word spread like wildfire that if the sick were touched, just touched, by this name they called Jesus, they would be healed. So Jesus touched all these sick people and they got better? Yes, but even those who simply touched the hem of his robe got healed too. I would never have believed such a thing if I hadn't seen it for myself. There you have it, testimony from the mayor herself. She never would have believed it if she hadn't seen it herself. Thank you, Emma and Mayor Clara. We now go to our Date Palm Live affiliate in Nazareth. Two formerly blind men were invited to talk about their incredible stories. Take it away, Studio Nazareth. 
Yes, thank you, Walter Kane and I. I'm Dusty Sandells, and I'm thrilled to bring you this eye-opening story. To be honest, it's my first news piece since I switched careers from being a backup singer with Nathan and the Nazarenes. I'm sure you've heard of them. All right, hey everybody, we're Nathan and the Nazarenes, and we're ready to come and play your Zoom happy hour, your outdoor, socially distanced backyard barbecue, whatever, we'll provide the music. Ready guys, let's rock. Music copyrighted by Nathan and the Nazarenes and can only be used with the express written consent of the band and their label, Holy Land Records. Rock on. Well, anyways, we heard about two events involving blind men and wanted to bring you these two men together to hear their stories. Both men claim they were no longer blind after two separate encounters with Jesus. First, Bartimaeus, can you give us the 411 on what went down? Sure, well, like I said, I was a blind beggar. I was at my spot where I sit by the road and I cry. Same place I've been every day for, well, forever. When I hear the noises of lots of people coming my way, I thought, great, some good coin will be thrown in my hat. But when I heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, I got so excited. I forgot all about money and just started shout shouting. I kept yelling, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I must have been really loud because some people told me to be quiet. But then they told me that Jesus wanted me to come to him. I jumped up and ran, and believe it or not, Jesus himself asked me what I wanted him to do for me. For me! I said, I want to see again. Then Jesus said, go, your faith has made you well. And all of the sudden, I could see again. What did you do then? I followed him. I couldn't believe it. Blind men from Bethsaida. You've heard Bartimaeus' story now. Is that the same thing that happened to you? Nope, not even close. What happened to me was crazy. My friends and I heard that this guy Jesus was in town, so they hauled me to where he was hanging out with some people. My friends begged Jesus to touch me, but instead, Jesus took me by the hand and led me a ways out of town. Then, I kid you not, he laid his hands on me and spit in my eyes, then asked if I could see. And you know what? I could. He touched me and spit in my eyes, and I could see. It was crazy. He spit in your eyes? Wow, just wow. But isn't it great to be able to see again? Sure is, man. Sure is. Well, this is the most exciting experience I've had since Nathan and the Nazarene's last album went platinum. Back to you, Date Palm Live. What a story from the blind man. I don't think we can call them blind anymore. True. Miraculous. We now turn to our two reporters who are on location just northwest of the Sea of Galilee, where people experience something amazing having to do with lunch. I am here at the Sea of Galilee where thousands of people came to hear Jesus speak. We put stuff on how many people there actually were, but all the people we talked with can agree on one thing. It was a miracle and this family saw it. That day, our family got up even before the sun to travel to the place that Jesus was teaching. We packed a bit once because we did not know how long we would be there. When we arrived, we were amazed to see four or five thousand people there. We found a place to sit down and listen. So later that afternoon, I saw some movement over to my right. And then this man walked up and gave me this basket heaping full of bread and fish. And he told me, take some for your family and then pass it on. So I gave that basket to my wife and we took some food for a family. She added something in and then we pass it on to the next family. Did you wonder where all the food came from? I think I have an answer. Earlier today, I interviewed a family where it all started. Let's look at that footage and then go back to the studio with Walter and Basiba. Jesus had, had his friends around him, and I heard one of them telling Jesus to send the people away because they were hungry. 
and he was sure there was not enough food for everyone to eat. Jesus looked at them and asked them how much food they had. One of his friends told them that they had five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus took the food from them, blessed it, and then handed it back so they could begin putting it in baskets to share. Everyone around got busy finding baskets and filling them. It seemed like there were baskets of food everywhere. All I know is that we got plenty to eat and it seemed that others did too. What incredible stories from the plains near the sea. Our next reporter is on the scene of a near tragedy. There with Jairus, the father, who nearly lost his daughter. Thank you, Bathsheba Walters. I am here with Jairus and his family. The story he is about to tell you is amazing. You may want to have tissues in handy to wipe your tears. So tell me, Jairus, what happened to your dear little girl? God has blessed me with only one daughter, and she fell sick. We all knew that she was dying. I had heard that this Jesus of Nazareth was close by. In desperation, I ran to him. The crowds pressed in, but I finally got to him and begged him to come with me. He turned to go with me, but crowds kept bothering him, and it was taking forever to get him to go. Some lady even grabbed at the hem of his robe to stop him from helping me. You, you must have been frantic. Did Jesus finally get to your house? Before we could get there, someone came to say that it was too late. My daughter had died. People around me told me not to bother the teacher anymore, but Jesus looked at me and told me not to be afraid and to believe that my daughter would be okay. Oh my goodness, did you believe him? I didn't know what to believe. When we finally arrived at the house, everyone was weeping and wailing. Jesus took us inside and said, Do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. We all looked at him like he was crazy. We even laughed at him. We could all see that she was dead. But sure enough, Jesus walked over to where she was lying down, took her hand, and told her to get up. And she did. What a story. The last thing that Jesus said was strange, though. He told us not to tell anyone. <laughs> but when you called, we felt we needed to tell this story. Thank you for taking our call. I think this is a story that people will be telling for a long time. Back to you, Walter and Bathsheba. So glad that story had a happy ending. We have found through our investigations that not everyone has been supportive of the miracles and occurrences that have been reported here in this exclusive report. That's right, Walter. These men are knowledgeable about Jewish laws and traditions, and they've been watching Jesus of Nazareth very carefully, and they have something to say about his actions. Reporter Rocky Rods is outside the synagogue speaking with a couple of these scribes and Pharisees to get their side of the story. Thank you, Walter and Bathsheba. Yes, I am here with Miss Scribe and Miss Pharisee, who have a different perspective on the stories already told. There have been some astonishing stories that people have been witnessing, but I understand you have some concerns. Tell me, what have you observed? Oh, where to begin? First of all, he is into blasphemy. I mean, he doesn't care that there are rules and regulations. He thinks he can forgive, only God can do that. He heals, only God can do that. And he works on the Sabbath, not even God does that. Yes, all those things. And this man hangs out with losers, cheats, lepers, tax collectors, possessed people, dead people. Need I say more? People have even called him king of the Jews. Blasphemy, I tell you. Yeah, who does he think he is? <gasps> well, I guess they had to go. Back to you, Bathsheba and Walter. Good thing that interview is over because we have breaking news to report from Jerusalem. Back to Nevea at the city gates who is standing by. The crowds are going wild here in Jerusalem. Word has come that Jesus is nearly here. Wait a minute, I think I see him. He seems to be riding on the, ba on the back of a donkey. The, the crowds are shouting, can you hear them? Emma Walsh, Jesus is coming and he's riding on a donkey. Hey, look, I think I see him coming. Look, Ben, look. Jesus riding on a donkey. Hosanna! 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 They're 
yelling Hosanna and waving palm and waving palm branches. And some some are lying their palm branches in the road for Jesus and his donkey to ride on. This is going to be some week here in Jerusalem. Thank you, Nevaeh, and thank you to all our reporters and the people who shared their stories. That wraps up our exclusive insider report on Jesus, the man on the donkey. I am Walter Canaanite. And I am with Sheba Walters. Thank you for joining us. Well, Hosanna indeed. Oh my goodness, kids, <laughs> parents, <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> thank <Awesome>. you. <laughs> to say that that was a little bit of fun, I think doesn't quite do it justice. <laughs> uh, Y'all did great, uh, thank you so much. Uh, what a fun way of telling the story, and it sure did tell the story, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was fun. I, I think I shared on, it was the best part of my week. Well, you know why now. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. But everybody did a great job, and yeah, I love how the story was told. It just kind of unfolded, and I think we've got some naturals out there in Nevaeh. Few yes. Media? Yeah, we do have a bunch Maybe of naturals future out there. Maybe future media, yeah. yeah. future media people. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it is fun to celebrate the story, <clears throat> to make it come alive, you know. We hear the scripture reading, and uh, I mean, in reality, it would have been kids and parents like along the road who were you know mm -hmm. just going about their days and so uh i mean that's a really fun telling of the story <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> gosh well um this palm sunday we are you know excited to be gathered together online to hear that awesome telling of the story and uh, we're also going to bring in some mary oliver poetry we have a poem by mary oliver where she focuses a little bit on the donkey the donkey we didn't have an actual donkey in this uh in this story but he was referenced you could see him uh, and so uh, we're gonna hear now Mary Oliver's story of the donkey and uh, or her poem where she brings up the donkey anything else we'd say about that before I send it here no I don't think so no nope. enjoy I think yeah. that's a good way to say it it's yeah it is a really neat poem and here it is the poet thinks about the donkey by Mary Oliver on the outskirts of Jerusalem the donkey waited not especially brave or filled with understanding, he stood and waited. How horses turned out into the meadow leap with delight. How doves released from their cages clatter away, splashed with sunlight. But the donkey, tied to a tree as usual, waited. And then he let himself be led away. Then he let the stranger mount. Never had he seen such crowds and I wonder if he had all imagined what was to happen. Still, he was what he had always been, small, dark, and obedient. I hope, finally, he felt brave. I hope, finally, he loved the man who rode so lightly upon him as he lifted one dusty hoof and stepped, as he had to, forward. Well, thanks, Jeremy, for reading yeah. our poem. Yeah, and it's awesome. I, I love the story of the donkey. I think it's one other perspective, along with our newscasters, that helps us think creatively about this journey of Jesus from entering into Jerusalem today and then moving into uh, Holy Week as we journey together. So we invite you to join in on that. With that being said, I think we'll begin <laughs> our Give me song. a second here. <laughs> Well, I love, I love the donkey idea, too. That was my other idea for a, a story for Palm Sunday, is, is what a great perspective that the donkey was just waiting. 
you know, everybody else is kind of frolicking and playing out in the field, but the donkey was waiting. He had a purpose. Mm-hmm. In a way, I envy the donkey. How so? Just, he had to wait and just do his thing. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no pressure on him. He just needed to do what he was made to do and, mm-hmm. you know, just needed to, yeah. Right. I, yeah. And Very Jesus s- kind of grabs him in the journey and he's led into this big celebration. I mean, it's yeah. just sort of this... You know, I think journeying with Jesus has that moment where we just experience things. So that, mm-hmm. well, it's yeah. unexpected too. Right. Yeah. I, I like that kind of newness and that that he maybe thought he was just going to have to go haul something and mm-hmm. that fun. So yeah. I love that she rode, and that he rode on him lightly. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you don't think about the fact that this donkey is carrying a full-grown man. Right. And you know if if Jesus. Well, I suppose we can just assume that Jesus could have control over that, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I like that idea, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mary Oliver, how we've appreciated your poetry. This has been... And we're not done yet. I, I know. Mean, we've got what, three more services of this. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, let's sing our closing song at this point. Okay. And I'm going to figure out how to get our slides up here. Sure. Our closing song, or I'm sorry, the 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 song we're going to do right now is um, I'll Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Yeah. So sing along with me and B. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, B and Taylor, for leading us in that. And thank you all for being a little flexible while we, uh, we're having a little bit of internet technical difficulties where some devices are dropping. And so we lost our slides, but we'll get back to that song, Joyful, as a sending song. We're going to continue by celebrating together Holy Communion. We'll begin with confession and forgiveness, invite you into this time of confession, and then into Holy Communion and prayer. And so hopefully you have your communion elements ready uh, close by because we'll continue with communion now. So here we go. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear this good news, that God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We'll continue now with Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts, and you prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As you receive these gifts of Holy Communion, we invite you then into a time of prayer. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, as our prayers rise up, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Well, as we near the end of this Palm Sunday service, we want to, of course, again, invite you all to join us for the parade. <laughs> we'll be marshalling here shortly. And so you're welcome to head over anytime. And around 11 o'clock, probably, Taylor will start some music. Uh, Hoot nanny, hoot nanny, a uh, hosanna, hoot nanny, and so that'll be really fun. And then we'll be parading. So Guardian Angels Riverview Landing, we'll be heading your way. We'll be making a loop through downtown. Uh, it'll be a fun, fun time. So very good. Yeah. Join us for that, and the map is on elkrivelutheran.org if you want to follow along. Yeah, and one last pitch for the Holy Week kits. If you haven't picked up your Holy Week kits yet, uh, don't don't miss out. Uh, they're really fun and available outside the church, and we would love to love to share those with you. And so it'll be it'll be great. Anything else? No, no, I don't think so. All right. Well, uh, we're gonna try our song again. <gasps> Do I get to uh, sing? Taylor, are you, you ready to sing? to sing? Yes. Yeah. This is called Joyful. Uh, it's a modern arrangement of Joyful, Joyful. We adore thee with a chorus that you may not be familiar with. So I'll start with the chorus, then we'll sing through, uh, sing through the song. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sins away. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun.
Taylor, and thank you all for being here this Palm Sunday morning. Uh, if you were wanting to see that program again, look at Facebook or YouTube. We'll get the whole thing uh, loaded up there, and you can watch it on repeat. I, I think that's what I want to do. It's pretty <laughs> fun. So uh, <laughs> by all means, I'll be out there, and we'll look forward to seeing you again through this Holy Week on Thursday with Monday, Thursday, Friday with Good Friday. And then Easter morning, whether it's drive-in church or online, we look forward to gathering with you on Easter to celebrate. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Not quite yet, but, but he will be. We'll get there. And so, uh, <laughs> yes. So again, happy Palm Sunday. We look forward to seeing some of you in the parade. And we'll try to do a live stream and get some stuff on Facebook as well. For those of you who are too far away from Elk River to join the parade, uh, we'll let you join online. So uh, happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Hope to see you again Hosanna. soon. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. We pray the Lord will be with you as you go forth. Please come back again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good to see you. I hope to see you again. Welcome, Join us next time. Say bye. Join us next time. Bye. Thank you for joining with us at Elk River Lutheran Church this morning during the Lenten season. Bye now. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. coming. Thank you for joining, joining us. us. So glad you came to Elk River Lutheran Church. Come again soon. Bye. Thanks for coming. Adios. So great to see you all. Hope you all come back real soon. Thanks for worshiping with us. And please come back again. We hope you liked our service today. And we want to welcome you back next Sunday. Goodbye and have a nice week. Thanks for coming to worship today. Have a great week. We're so glad you could join us for worship this morning. Hope, hope to see you again soon. Bye. And we're glad that you joined us. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Goodbye. We're so glad you were here today. You enjoyed the, the service today. Have a nice day. So that was sure is a great service. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Blessings. Thank you all for coming. Hope you had a great time. See you next time. Bye.